that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. Welcome to the Greenlight Maine College Finale. This has been a fantastic season. It began with 10 passionate students solving problems and improving the planet in many ways. You're about to meet the top three and they will share more than $20,000 to invest in their companies right here in Maine. To decide this, we have some very important people, our judges who are very supportive and want to help these students grow our great state. Let's say hello to them now. Welcome Tom Kittredge from Maine Technology Institute. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's been such an exciting journey and I'm excited to see the final. As you mentioned, I'm with MTI and MTI, we are an organization that looks to support and grow Maine's innovation ecosystem. Excellent. Next up, we have Amber Hefner Cosby from Bangor Savings Bank. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm the Director of Business Technology and our teams help uh, create, integrate, and support the systems that allow our employees to take, give, deliver the you matter more promise to our customers. Excellent. And rounding out the panel today is Jim Dinkle from First Park. Thank you, Julene. I'm the Executive Director of First Park, a uh, position I've held for six years. Uh, we are a commerce and business technology center located off I-95 in Oakland near Waterville. Perfect location. Well, thank you all so much for being here. It's important to note that our students spend a lot of time crafting their pitch. Let's take a look back on how the season unfolded. Click is an app being developed by Abby Anderson, a student at the University of New England. She seeks to promote school activities and connect like-minded college students. Alex Muir and Dylan Dundon are the University of Maine duo, My Pocket Workshop. Their online store seeks to attract makers to purchase all the parts for their projects on one site. Jacob Curtis from the University of Southern Maine will represent Refilla, a subscription-based recycled 3D printer filament provider. These are the final three contestants. Now let's hear them pitch. Our first pitch is Refilla. From the University of Southern Maine, welcome Jacob Curtis whenever you're ready. Thanks, Julene. Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob Curtis, and seven months ago, my close friend, Timber Sabroff, and I started tackling one of the largest problems in 3D printing to date. While in the MIST lab located at the University of Southern Maine, we witnessed this problem firsthand. Spread across the counters were leftover scraps from 3D printing and all of the abandoned one-time use prototypes. The big problem with the current waste in 3D printing is that the solution is throwing it in the garbage. This is not beneficial for any 3D printing user and it sure isn't healthy for our planet. So Tim and I were thinking to ourselves, how could we build a prototype that takes the current 3D printing waste and create a recycled filament to be used over and over again? So we put our heads together and built our first prototype, prototypes. And while doing so, we thought to ourselves, is this just an hour problem or is this a problem industry wide? And how, how could this problem be solved? And what does it mean for the value for the 3D printing users? This led to the creation of Refilla, the market's first subscri subscription-based service for recycling uh, 3D printed plastic waste and creating recycled filament. Uh, innovative technologies like 3D printing call for innovative solutions. That's why Refilla will accompany the ongoing growth and development of the 3D printing industry. The current market value for 3D printing here in the United States is valued at just over $6 billion, and that's accompanied with a compounded annual growth rate of 14%. On the other hand, a 3D printing materials market is valued at just over 500 million in the United States, and that's a company with a compounded annual growth rate of 12%. So we have access to two separate but very distinctive markets that we can expand and grow throughout and extend the opportunity for folks that are purchasing in those markets um, with our subscription service. Refill's go-to-market strategy is to focus on household users, the individuals that don't have access to best extrusion and recycling practices. We believe that early adopters are best fit for a subscription-based service. In the future, Refiller would love to uh, work with companies closely with like manufacturers and corporations that are doing higher volume and higher scale 3D prints. So we can have both business to business and business to consumer exchanges. We're asking for $10,000 to expand our product development and to further and perfect our research model um, for in preparation for the Refiller launch. So what do you say judges? Join us in revolutionizing the 3D printing market, assisting the lives of our consumers and saving our planet Earth. Thank you. 
Excellent pitch, great close. Okay, Tom, kick us off with the questions. Yeah, excellent pitch. I love the focus on reducing waste. Can you talk a little bit about why you chose to pursue a subscription model rather than just selling them as one-off units? Yeah, so the subscription service is uh, sort of like a, it's a value proposition for folks that are just looking to uh, you know, waste every single month. They send that in. It's for the convenience of the users, and they're not focused on buying individual units because you know, who knows if they want one or two. With the subscription service, we're actually limiting up to two, and it's just a continuous uh, model. And we've seen that in the industry. Subscriptions are very popular, and we figure we could, we could add this onto 3D printing, and it's, it's done well. Great. Amber. I love this pitch. Um, so this, the winning the $10,000 today would be a great boon to moving forward with your ideas here. But what other funding sources have helped you get to the place that you're at today? Yeah, so uh, we're actually, after so Greenlight May, we're looking forward to uh, then applying to MTI and doing the matching process. So getting more grant funding for, uh, again, further in that product development so we can actually recycle this, this filament over and over again. And we're actually conducting research to do that. So thank you. Jim. Jacob, I'm a great believer in what you're doing, um, but I'm curious about the logistics of how the waste is returned, what the supply stream is as far as the waste going back to uh, be recycled or reprocessed. Excellent question. Thank you so much. I wanted to hit that too as well. So with our, uh, our box here, we've, we're actually going to be able to ship our uh, plastic waste through the mail, and we've already conducted all of the profitability models with the, uh, the payment of shipping costs. Um, and so your question is, uh, just to be specific, you asked about the transportation of how to getting to the home and back. Yes. So through the shipping, we'd actually ship off, um, they'd ship off the plastic waste to us. We would then uh, do our extrusion methods, and then we send that back off through the sh same shipping carrier. Um, we've already calculated all that profitability, so we know that we can withstand the subscription. Excellent. Yeah. And for our folks at home, what kind of things do people print with these? Awesome, yeah. So <laughs> we've seen all kinds of stuff between, uh, you know, airplanes and uh, Eiffel Towers and, and small little shoes. I've seen large shoes. There's a vast amount of things that you can 3D print at home. It's just whatever your, your imagination is limited to. Excellent. Okay, well, great pitch. Some very thoughtful questions. We need to take our first break and hear from our sponsors, but don't go away because we have a lot more Greenlight Main coming up next. Bangor Savings Bank, committed to investing in its employees, customers, and communities to help create a stronger Northern New England. Bangor Savings Bank, you matter more. Maine Technology Institute, offering grants, loans, and equity investments to help support Maine's innovation economy and committed to supporting new ideas with potential to grow. Visit maintechnology.org. Hey Maine, how are you? Yes, you. How are you really? It's a question we rarely ask ourselves. But to Northern Light Health, how you are means a lot. Learn more at northernlighthealth.org slash howareyou. Welcome back. Our next company is helping to connect students to their college campuses in a big way. From the University of New England, I'd like to welcome Abby Anderson. Whenever you're ready, just look right at the judges and have fun. Okay, thank you. My name is Abby Anderson, and by the end of my sophomore year of college, I had never felt more isolated in my life. Even though I was the captain of my tennis team and I had a good GPA, I still felt like I hadn't found my people yet on campus. And speaking with other students from across the country, I quickly learned I wasn't the only one feeling this way. In fact, over two million college students drop out of higher education annually due to feeling like they don't fit in with their college's social life. I spoke with over 40 universities, from Texas A&M to Ohio State to UNE, and learned that they all share the same problem. Decreasing college retention rates is plaguing higher education to the extent that this issue is making front page news. Student affairs departments are reporting record low attendance rates that used to define campus culture, and furthermore have limited visibility into what their students are actually interested in. I've created Click a social media platform that aims to make every college student feel connected to their college campus. Students are my users and student affairs departments are my customers. This is not like other social media platforms. Once you have your connections on campus, you're encouraged to use your phone to get off of your phone. 
Students connect based off of their interests, hobbies, and personalities. Let me give you a real example from a student I, I spoke with. Cam is a senior football player at the University of New England who recently decided to go vegan. However, he doesn't know other vegan students on campus. Cam can log on to Click, find other vegan students, and share new ideas and cooking recipes through a group channel. Student Affairs can then use this information to sponsor a vegan cooking class on campus where Cam and his new Click can meet up in person and further connect. Click will increase college retention rates and furthermore empower students to feel a sense of belonging on their campus. Since my last appearance on Greenlight, I've made a lot of headway in my business. I have developed a website, I have the entire user interface built out, and I have one university that's agreed to do business with me. In fact, I'm excited to announce that the University of New England will be my first pilot university where Click will be launching this coming academic year to their entire 3,500 undergraduate student body. I've spoke with many successful entrepreneurs such as David Shaw, the founder of IDEX, who immediately saw the potential for Click. Click is not only limited to college campuses, however. This idea of creating community can be scaled to neighborhoods, retirement homes, and workplaces. I've heard time and time again from the colleges I've spoke with that they could have used my solution yesterday. With the money I win from Creenlight, it will enable me to launch the beta version of my platform in the fall of 2023 at 10 pilot universities throughout Maine and Greater New England. Thank you. Excellent pitch, helping to improve so many lives. Thank you, Abby. Okay, Tom. Yeah, great pitch, and I, I love the fact that you're addressing problems of isolation and belonging. Can you talk a little bit about your strategy to kind of reach a critical mass of students, enough so that other students want to join because they know their peers are using the, the product? Yeah, so I'm partnering with universities in their first year experience orientations throughout the summers, so that way students are introduced to the platform be e even before they make it on campus. And then there will be another event to launch Click, and that way they'll be able to log on and meet their friends. Word of mouth is also a really powerful way to spread ideas across to students. So if you know that half of your friends are on Click meeting other people, you're bound to find a platform as well. Absolutely. Amber. I wish my nephew had this when he was at the University of Maine, so I really applaud your efforts. What do you, what, what do you think the lift is for the uh, Student Affairs Office and yourself in terms of staffing to create the events and the content that will make Click valuable for each instance? So Click is coded so that way it has a seamless transition between already existing platforms that universities are using to create events and promote them to their universities. So it's seamless between platforms they're already using to establish these events and push them out to their students and Click takes that information and puts it in one centralized spot for all of them to see. Thank you. You can see how that would be efficient. Okay, Jim. Abby, your presentation, my mind right now is like a popcorn popper where the kernels are exploding in <laughs> every direction, what the potential I see is for Click. Uh, I, I told you that when I was in college, word of mouth was usually through the student newspaper or through flyers that were tacked onto bulletin boards around campus, so I really applaud you. I think, you know, people talk about sometimes the apps and the, the internet being impersonal, but in fact, you're, you're personalizing it with, a, with an app like this. Uh, and I, th I see potential for people to make lifelong friendships and relationships through your app. So I really applaud you. Uh, again, uh, this is something I think that could go beyond Maine or New England nationally or worldwide. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, so tell us, if you were to receive the money, what would you use it for? Um, I would put it towards my development costs. I recently hired a development firm that's going to be working with me over the next two months to build out the coding side of the platform so that way we can launch in the fall of 2023 at UNE. Awesome. Well, great job. We can't wait to see where you go with this. Thank you so much, Abby. We need to take a short break, but the University of Maine at Orno is up next, so don't go away. We'll be right back.
fame came along at a time when we really needed somebody to believe in our mission. It's so nice to have somebody actually try to understand what we're doing. Fame helps main businesses and lenders get to yes for their financing needs. Thank you, Fame. Thank you, Fame. Thank you, Fame. Welcome back. Our final pitch is My Pocket Workshop. I'd like to welcome Alex Muir and Dylan Dundon from the University of Maine at Orono. We cannot wait to hear all about this, so whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm Alex. This is Dylan. Hello. We're two makers who've gone to college to learn how to make things. And it's still difficult. We know you can't get everything you need from the local hardware store, especially if your project is made of plastic or metal. And forget hunting website to website for those niche products. You'll pay shipping to every vendor you go to. Now, the cost of owning a machine can be hundreds or thousands of dollars, and that's often not justified by a small-scale project. So if I've learned one thing at college, it's that manufacturers lean on teams of people to accomplish their goals. So why can't our makers lean on us to do the things they can't afford or don't know how to do themselves? We've done the research and people are aching for affordable tools that can take the tedium and calculation out of the design process. As I go to college, I'm learning mechanical engineering and have had valuable internships along the way. They've taught me the design process and the manufacturing process. I've been studying electrical and computer engineering in addition to gaining internship experience in data processing and web design. Let me walk you through our idea. MyPocketWorkshop.com is an online design platform where users can create and build their own projects. Using proven sketching and dialogue software, these users effortlessly recreate their ideas and bring them to life while we take care of the calculations behind the scenes. And this makes the process comfortable for every level of expertise, from the complete beginner who just wants to learn to the seasoned professional trying to cut down our design time. Once these customers are satisfied, all the designs are sent to our network of main manufacturers and all the hardware is purchased from suppliers whose inventories are regularly updated in our system. Once finished, these parts are brought back to our facility where we'll package them up with instructions and send them out to those individual uh, customers. Bulking together similar orders, we're able to save on shipping and setup costs, which we could pass down to those customers as well. And finally, to generate our own profit, we collect per project payment, in addition to offering a subscription that offers premium features, like additional storage space, access to detailed design blueprints, and more community access. Speaking of community, we've leveraged our University of Maine network and begun meeting with Bangor area manufacturers who can get us off the ground. Now, research indicates that this maker market stems largely from the college demographic. So, we'll be campaigning by word of mouth at colleges and on social media to reach this tech-savvy customer. We'll be tracking our most demanded services. The end goal is to own our most profitable services, so whether we rely on our main manufacturers or we are the main manufacturers, we ensure maximum revenue and jobs stay in the state of Maine. Therefore, we're asking for $10,000 to develop our online design platform and begin providing value for our users. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for your time. Well, it is a pleasure to have you both. This is a builder's dream come true. So I can't wait to hear the questions. Go ahead, Tom. Excellent pitch. So will you be sending out tools as well, or is it just the kind of pre-cut materials? Yeah, we definitely plan to have options available. Um, assemb like full assembly would be one of them. But uh, in this true spirit of making, if you want to make it yourself, we can definitely do that. And I think tools would be a great idea, um, especially considering we'll have an online inventory built up. Great. Amber. To dovetail on that, maybe have you thought about renting tools? So like a rental service, maybe you need this tool this one time for this one project, but you don't need it another time. And so maybe you have an inventory of tools that help your makers with their projects on a one-off basis. That may work. Um, we do want to have a network of shipping locations for larger projects because we know that it's not uh, feasible to ship like huge projects sure. like a swing set to your house <laughs> per se. Um, so if they go to a location that might be a hardware store, they could definitely rent tools there and it would be very um, useful to our user. Your target customers, is it really more a consumer like individuals or, or businesses? Definitely individuals. There are more expensive services like professional ser prototyping services, um, but we know from experience that you, they're pretty inaccessible to uh, the average Joe who's trying to make a project. Um, so we're really trying to target the at-home consumer who just you know wants to make things in his garage but might not have you know a five thousand dollar mill to complete his project. 
So for that at-home consumer, can you give us an idea of some of the things you have in mind? Uh, projects? Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think last time we mentioned like a bookend or something, which is something most people can do themselves. But uh, the, the one we've been kicking around are like uh, maybe a push cart or a go cart where we could have um, an AI generated template based on what previous users who've elected to share their projects have done. Um, and that way, the user can use that dialog to create their, their item without having to spend uh, you know, weeks <laughs> designing each component and going over it one at a time. We just want it to be a seamless flow. And at the end of the day, you're only paying for setup and shipping on one project instead of every single item that's in your order. Awesome, very convenient. Well, tremendous job. Great, good luck to both of you. I know you guys are gonna be a big success. Thank you. Okay, we have one more short break and our judges are gonna deliberate, so don't go away. We'll be right back. If you own a business and wanna get more involved with Greenlight Maine, go to our website at greenlightmaine.com. Partnering with us means supporting startups, creating jobs, and building Maine's economy. Welcome back. It's time for our judges' deliberation, and you get to spend a lot of time off camera, so you can take a deep dive and really get to know these companies. Now, let's start with Refilla, only because they pitch first. Yeah, and I thought it was an excellent pitch. You know, one of the things I really liked about the company is I think they're moving into an industry, 3D printing, that's set to really grow and explode, and so they have a bit of a, a first mover advantage there. I think a potential risk is they're pursuing a subscription model, $25 a month. You know, can they get enough subscribers to make it a profitable business? It's a lot of subscriptions. Okay, Amber. Um, I really, with having coworkers who love their 3D printers and who care about the environment, I really think that this innovative product has legs and that a lot of people will be excited about it. Great. Refilla is definitely tapping into the worldwide environmental movement. Uh, the sustainability aspect of this intrigues me. Um, so uh, they batted a thousand. They've clearly done their homework and they have this very strong business plan. Okay, let's switch gears to Abby with Click. Yeah, I mean, her pitch really resonated with me, and I think we all have experienced kind of that, those issues of isolation and wanting to feel community, especially at college. Um, so I, I thought it was a very powerful description of the problem. Um, a potential risk I see is there are a number of existing social media platforms out there, and what if they try to kind of move into the space once Click takes off? Uh, competition, right? Yeah. For sure, I agree with you. Um, I just thought it was a very thoughtful niche um, product and a heightened marketplace, and even though there might be um, problems with other social media platforms, she, she really resonated with me as to the direct benefit of this platform. Yeah, it can help so many people. Okay, Jim. I agree about the c c competitive factor in this as well as the other two judges. I believe that Abby's done a great job networking her idea. I think she has strong access to capital from investors across the state of Maine, and that's a good uh, sign. Yeah, she's well underway with a pilot program. Yes. Okay, my pocket workshop. Yeah, I loved how deeply rooted it was in the founder's own personal experience and, and their own experience as engineers. Um, one of the potential risks I saw was because so much of their supply chain is kind of outside of their control, there's a lot of logistics involved, and so there's a, you know potential for things to get a little complicated. Yes, they are engineers, though. They know what they're doing, right? Exactly, and I, I agree with you again. Um, and, but I do love their passion for making, and I think that passion will take them a long way in what they're trying to do with My Pocket Workshop. It's very much a niche business, what they're doing. I, I like the idea. They're sort of simplifying um, what IKEA has done in the consumer <laughs> market for decades. Um, the thing that still intrigues me, though, are the rights and the propri proprietary ideas of their designs, the ownership of that. Interestingly enough, I think that the um, forensics of their website will be very telling in the years to come where the hits are coming from outside the United States especially. Awesome, well very great feedback, thoughtful comments. They are all winners, they're all leaving with money today, so everybody's gonna be very happy. And when we come back, we're gonna find out. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Albin, Randall, and Bennett, committed to providing accounting solutions to Greenlight Maine startups. Working with businesses and organizations that operate locally and nationally. ARBCPA.com
First Park, a 285-acre business park located in Oakland, Maine, offering fiber internet, three-phase power, and pre-permitted sites for businesses to start or expand. Details at firstpark.com. Bangor Savings Bank, committed to investing in its employees, customers, and communities to help create a stronger northern New England. Bangor Savings Bank. You matter more. Welcome back. We are moments away from finding out, but first we'd like to thank our premier sponsor, Bangor Savings Bank, Maine Technology Institute, Fame for sponsoring the first place $10,000 prize, and Thomas College for organizing the entire college series. Okay, judges, it's time for the reveal. For third place and $5,000 goes to My Pocket Workshop. Second place for $7,500 goes to Refilla. And that means for first place and $10,000 goes to Click. Congratulations to all of you. You are all destined for great things and we can't wait to see what you do. Well, that's going to do it for us. We want to thank all of our sponsors and all of you at home for joining in each week to grow Maine's economy. We'd also like to thank Chilton Furniture for this beautiful set. We'll be back next week for the grand finale of the Greenlight Maine original series. Have a great week. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Furniture for Greenlight Maine is provided by Chilton, a Maine company offering a modern take on traditional New England wood furniture. Hotel accommodations for Greenlight Maine are provided by Hilton Garden Inn, Auburn, Riverwatch, 